Hi everybody, welcome to Health Hangouts with Amanda. Um, this is week two and I have Sue Casement here with me who is a long time friend. Um, I used to work with her when I was in a teenager. <laughs> and <just> like, <laughs> like, she's really funny. Mm. And, um, and yeah, uh, Sue is now the uh, national vice president for Arbonne. And, uh, and I wanted to invite you, Sue, to come and do this with us because we're, I'm going to be posting one video per day for the duration of our mandated isolation. And, you know, I'm prepared for that to be a hundred videos or more. And I mm -hmm. wanted to access um, conversations with people who are really important to me. And, uh, and yeah, I've just known you for a very long time. You've been very supportive over the years of, of my personal development and professional development. And I see how open you are on Facebook when you're talking about your own development. And part of what we're trying to do here is to show the world that, that we're all just human and we're all just doing the mm -hmm. best that we can. And if we can spread uh, you know, strength, hope, and love to those who aren't reaching out, um, then, then that's great. And if it, it, it motivates someone to reach out, uh, and get some support for themselves or do something different in their isolation with the ideas that they're learning in these, these videos. That's great. That's what we're hoping for. So, so Sue, welcome to this hour or whatever we're going to talk for. And I'm just so <laughs> thankful that you taking the time to do this with me. Thanks, Amy. It's good. Or Amanda, Amy, I'm not sure what, I guess. Okay. Um, <clears throat> it's, oh um, my goodness. Hang on a second. You know what just happened? I just what? realized. That's so weird. I mean, wow. I have to start over. I think we have to start okay. over. Shit. My eyes water like instantly when... Because was I on mute or did you hear me? No, no, I heard you. <coughs> oh, no. I, I heard you, on... but then, but then you, but then when you, when I started talking and said, I don't know if you're Amy or Amanda, <laughs> I don't know what to call you. That's when you muted it. <laughs> you know what? I'm not going to stop it. I'm just going to let it. Okay. Whatever. It's all good. Like, because this whatever. is, the um, this yeah, is life. This is life. It muted. It muted. So let's just give a little caveat here. I have two yeah. names. Um, professionally, I go by Amanda. And personally, I go by Amy. Um, and it's, it's because I was adopted when I was really, when I was two years old. And my name when I was born was Amanda. And then I grew up with the name Amy. So legally was never changed. But when I met my birth mom, uh, my, because my, my, the people who adopted me, they prefer to Amy. And um, so that's, that's what all everybody knew me as. And then when I met my birth mom, when I was 18 years old, she told a story that really uh, was quite moving about how she really, she actually saved my life um, mm -hmm. um, by giving me away. And so to honor her, uh, I said, well, you know, instead of calling you mom, because I'm not able to do that. Um, I don't know how to do that because mm -hmm. I have, you know, the mom I know as mom. And so to mm -hmm. honor her, I changed my professional identity to Amanda. Um, mm -hmm. I actually even changed my last name at the time to, to what I was born with. And then I ended up getting married, but, and then changed it to what it is now. It's, that's a married name. Um, so in any case, that's why I have two names. So my, my friends know me as Amy and professionally I go by Amanda. So that's why Sue was like, Amy, Amanda. yeah, <laughs> the, Rosa, the woman I just interviewed right before you, Sue, she calls me Amy Manda because it's, uh, uh it's just kind of fun. That's yeah. Perfect. So you can call me whatever, but, uh, but yeah, so that, there you go. Everybody can that's know me as either, either <laughs> one uh, professionally, I prefer Amanda, but personally, and Sue, you are a friend of mine. So you, you do you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Okay. So now after our little, like, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I, I swore and I almost restarted, but no, we're just going to leave it uh, as a blooper. It's life. It's there, real there, life. there you go. It's life. <laughs> okay. So, so yeah, welcome and uh, take Thank it away. You. Like how, how are you guys coping? Uh, what are you doing uh, to support yourselves and for your team? Cause you have quite a large team yeah. of Arbonne consultants under you. Yeah. So, um, the national vice president title with Arbonne just it's a fancy title just saying you know basically that I've helped enough people have success in Arbonne that I have promoted to the top the top level of the company. Obviously that means I work with a lot of people um, in my organization from around the world and um, and so I've seen how this 
crisis that we're in is impacting, you know, globally, um, the economy and people's mindsets mm -hmm. and people's health. And it's, it's been really eye opening. It's funny, I, you know, we were talking before about how I kind of felt like as soon as it hit in Canada, I went into the whole shock mode, sit on the couch, watch the Netflix, like, you know, situation. However, um, I was also right smack dab it like I kind of started breaking early March in um, in Canada right um, and that's when the news started getting really strong and mm -hmm. I had already decided I was going to do a clean eating challenge in March and so I was about a week into this no sugar no uh, gluten no alcohol mm -hmm. no coffee and no dairy for a 30-day window um, so when <laughs> when this broke um you know i had already committed to doing this program and i guess what what you might not know is i'm a super emotional eater so this was wicked hard for me because obviously i'm watching the the panic and people hoarding and all of the news and stuff like that that first week that it was really being um, introduced and i'm sitting here with this clean eating diet going like what the <laughs> but what i learned from that was and i stuck to that diet for the full 30 days and what it did was it really gave me a sense of control um, when the world is out of control, there's few things that I think we can control. And one of them is what we're, we're putting in our mouth, right? Mm -hmm. And so I just stuck to that diet um, and it gave me something to focus on that was positive and powerful that I could do for my health and my mindset and keep me focused. But what I didn't realize was I was sharing my journey on social media as well with sticking to this diet. And I was inspiring people along the way to like make healthier choices. And, you know, I had people cheering me on because it was definitely a difficult um, process to do during an emotional time, but it gave me a sense of peace and control. And so, you know, that's one of my tips is as we go through this process, if you're feeling out of control, Think about the few things you can control, which obviously is, you know, one of what you're eating, what you're fueling your body with, what you're consuming, like listening to reading. Um, again, I was on the couch for the first week or so binge watching the news and I was just getting deeper and deeper into this state of panic and depression and fear and anxiety. And, and then I realized, wait a minute, I keep seeing the same six stories repeated over and over again. And the, the same pictures from the same hospitals mm -hmm. on, on, why am I watching this? Like, mm -hmm. here's the thing. If I need to know something, if the sky's falling and I really need to know something serious is happening and not saying this isn't serious, this is very serious, but if I need to be aware of it, I know where I need to go. I can go to the World Health Organization and, and get the information direct from them. Or someone from my family is going to reach out and say, hey, are you okay? Because yeah. I think by consuming so much negative media, it puts you in that place too where you're, you're feeling helpless. And we can't control what's going on in the world. All we can control is what, what, you know, what we're eating, what we're thinking, and if we're moving our bodies, right? Keeping, mm -hmm. keeping uh, fit in some way, shape or form. So, so that's kind of how I've been dealing with my personal um, journey through this health crisis. As far as my team, I think honestly, can I'm just can trying I interject, to- interject Sue? Yeah. And just, just ask, um, just something came up for me as you were talking about the, yeah. the diet piece. And, mm -hmm. and I'm mindful that we, we have a specialization in, in treating eating disorders here. And so I'm mindful that we hmm. may have viewers that, that say, Oh, well, th that might be a great idea. I should, I should like plug into a diet of some kind. And I want to be mm. careful about that. So what I, mm -hmm. what I, what I really support <clears throat> is this idea of lifestyle change. And mm -hmm. that is, that is what I've seen you focus on for the last yes. 10 years is, is changing your lifestyle. So so I just want to clarify with you, um, well, I'll say my piece and you, you, you can respond if you sure. wish, but um, this idea of, of jumping into diets to help us feel better or change our bodies and things like that, it's, it's a slippery slope, especially when we are struggling with 
body image issues or or an eating disorder of some kind or emotional eating and so i don't want to give the message out there that that like yeah like pick up a diet like you know that, that's no. a great idea but no. i do want to support what sue is saying in that you know a lifestyle change is really important when we're struggling with things like emotional eating Mm -hmm. And to do that, we have to change our patterns and behavior. And that means we might need a program of some kind. And I'm hoping structure. that, you know, yeah, structure. So, mm -hmm. so when, when I think about fad diets, it's like, there are so many things oh, out yeah. there that people can get yes. sucked into. And some of them are just garbage. If I yes. can say that. So honestly, totally. I'm not, not going to pin any business specifically. So I really would love um, for people to be, this is tough because aware. how do you get informed? But but like get informed and be aware yes. of, of what your programming is. And and if we can reword the word diet and say like, this is a lifestyle change that's informing me of how to live well. So Sue, can you speak to that a bit? Yeah, totally. Like like I mentioned, I, I, I don't like the word diet. I never said the word diet. It's not in my vocabulary. Um, I said clean eating challenge because here's the reason why. Um, what I've done is educate myself on what those ingredients do. Dairy, um, sugar, caffeine, mm -hmm. um, those ingredients aren't necessarily the healthiest um, in our body and we, we tend to consume a lot of it and it causes toxicity, it causes inflammation, causes brain fog. Um, so what I found was, okay, by doing this clean eating challenge and eliminating those ingredients for 30 days, I was able to kind of push a reset button. Um, and I, I found the brain fog lifting and the bloating going away and just, I, I felt better. And when you feel better, I think you do better. And so for me, I knew it wasn't going to be a forever, like, I mean, I'm not going to eliminate those ingredients from my diet forever more. But I wanted to do a 30 day reset so that I could get the feeling of what does it feel like when I do consume sugar? What does it feel like when I do consume dairy? Do I notice I'm bloated or irritated or, you know, like what are the signs that I'm feeling when I do put these things back into my diet? And that was really eye opening to me. And so today um, I'm I classify what, you know, 80, 20 is kind of what, what my rule is. So 80% of the time I try to eat healthy, green, clean um, ingredients and 20% of the time I'll have a treat. So whether that's a glass of wine or, you know, a piece of cake or whatever I want. Um, but I'm, I guess what, what the whole program did for me was make me realize um, to be aware of how much control I really do have over um, the choices that I get to make and how my body uh, feels about those choices. And mm -hmm. before that, I was just kind of eating blindly. Again, I was an emotional eater. I grew up in the fast food industry. <laughs> my parents owned a fast food restaurant um, all through my life. So I'd never really given the, the mind gut connection. Um, you know, I never really thought about how the food was affecting all of my body my mind, my health, like, and my gut. So, um, yeah, so it's been really eye-opening for me. And, and I totally agree, Amy, there, there's no magic fix um, diet for anybody. I don't like the word diet. I just think it's, in, it's a being aware of how your body um, feels when you have certain mm -hmm. ingredients in your system is key. And, and the main underlying theme through that is just being aware, get educated. Some people can't have dairy. It makes them break out, makes them bloated. Um, mm -hmm. Caffeine sometimes gives you um, the trots, <laughs> for lack of a better word, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's Absolutely. just understanding how does my body process these. And, and so, yeah, so, it, um, so that's one thing I, I felt like I did. And then as far as my team, I think, um, I think uh, by me kind of, modeling what I was doing and what I am doing, which is I'm not consuming a lot of so like so the negative social media and the news and stuff like that. Mm. I'm trying to stay very positive. Well, I am very positive on my social media. I don't think it adds any value to the world to be sharing top news stories of detrimental stuff going on around the globe that we have no control over. I, I feel like people will find that information anyway. There's no point in sharing that. Um, so I just focus on sharing positive messages that show hope because if you don't, you know, if you have hope, you have something, right? 
Mm -hmm. Have you, um, I don't know if I mentioned this to you when we chatted um, yesterday, but have you watched uh, John Krasinski's uh, Some Good News channel no. on Facebook? Oh, wait, oh. wait, I started watching it. Yes, I love him. <laughs> do it, do it. Mm -hmm. Because so, um, so there's two episodes so far and this guy okay. is amazing like, yeah. like he really is and um and so personal that's what and we should be sharing so funny yeah. yeah and so yeah and, and it's not that long it's like i think the second one i think they both were like less than 10 minutes long or something but but he's just he just brings in like these these stories that people are sharing on social media of positive things and it's funny and he's like turned it into you know he's wearing his his uh, pajama bottoms and he's in his office yep. and he's got a nice yep. shirt on and and um and the last one the second one that i watched which is the last one that he's created so far i believe is uh he's just doing really wonderful things for people mm -hmm. out in in the community um yeah and it's just funny like this guy is a gem so um yeah. so yeah see, i would recommend that, those are yeah those are the check things we need to be sharing yeah check it out right and um, yeah uh, yeah from from john krasinski from the office uh yeah incredible human being yeah 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 i love yeah. that and i wish i wish more people would share those kinds of things because uh, I, to me i guess at the end of the day i feel like everything is is uh is energy and emotion and if, if we're if we're, we're consuming good positive material i feel like that helps that helps me stay positive anyway um mm -hmm. i notice you know when if i'm watching the news or watching doom and gloom i feel doom and gloom if i'm watching something like that that's funny and uplifting i feel better and isn't it about feeling better well and you know i've always gotten razzed by my friends who say oh you know i was reading the paper this morning or i was reading the national news or this and that and they're like they're like, do you ever, you know, do you know what's going on, you know, in whatever country? <laughs> I'm like, no, <laughs> no, I don't. Yeah. Because, yeah. because if I need to know it, I've always said this, if I need to know yeah. it, I will find out about it from someone in my social circle. And 100%. I don't, I, you know, it doesn't help me to like, I just, I don't no. want to read the paper in the morning well, and like, feel like, you know, like crap yeah. afterwards. Okay. And have that on your have that on your shoulders throughout the day. I remember oh. when my kids were younger. My oldest son is sixteen now, so he's driving, right? But um, mm -hmm. when I used when I used to drive both the boys to school, obviously in the morning, that's when the news comes on. Well, my kids know as soon as the news comes on, I turn off the radio. We listen to music, but when the news comes on, I don't want my kids to hear that crap. It's nothing that they can control, and if it is something they can control. They're going to hear about it. I'm going to say, "Hey, we need to be more aware of this, or we need to do this." Yeah, blah, if it's blah, blah. important to be educated, but, then fine. Yeah, but totally an excess in this different radio stations yeah. and news stations saying the same thing over and over, over and, like, and over. I just yeah, just go to the source, right? And hundred percent. Also, had a, I had a guy say to me once, quite a, a few weeks ago, he said, "You know, I'm going to focus on spending 23 hours just." like a day, just like doing my own thing and sleeping and like having my life, and my family, having this freedom. I'm going to spend mm -hmm. one hour a day um, being open to updates. Yeah. And, and that's it because it's not safe for my emotional and mental health to be bombarded with all of this yeah. because there's nothing I can do about it, but do what right? I can. Yeah. And again, that's part, part of being aware. How do you feel? right? If that's making you feel like crap when you're watching or listening to that stuff, maybe it's not the healthiest thing for you to listen to, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. again, I think it all circles back to that. How are your, um, how is your team kind of coping and, and how are you supporting them in, in being able to get through this? Definitely been hard um, on the kids for sure. So my teen is also like straight A honor student. So he's really missing school. I mean, they're, they're doing really great programming in Alberta here. We're in Alberta and his online schooling has been very good for him. Um, the thing that I think is, is cool for the kids is they've grown up with social media and their phones, right? So they they don't feel, I think, as disconnected as the rest of us feel because, you know, prior to that like not era, new for them, 
right? Like, they, I mean, yeah. a lot of their relationships are already just on Snapchat or just on Xbox when they're playing a game or whatever, right? So I think the older generations are more feeling the, the, the social, um, sure. That's my own personal opinion anyway. So my 16 year old is he's he's coping. I mean, he's got a little girlfriend too. So they spend <laughs> a lot of time on FaceTime and whatnot, right? He's but, so tall. Oh my goodness. Last so time I saw tall. him. But like, like uh, when I was in your living room last a couple year. years ago, last yeah. year. Yeah. He yeah. was so tall, like his dad, right? And I was like, what? Right? Yeah. And then my, my baby is 12 and he is taller than me now, which is crazy. And, um, and he is actually loving online school. So two totally different yeah. kids. He, he kind of struggles with school. He gets bullied a little bit in school. Hasn't really found a circle of close friends. He can kind of, doesn't really fit in, in any like area. So mm -hmm. he doesn't really enjoy school. Um, but he loves online school and he's thriving with it. So that's mm -hmm. been really eye opening yeah. for me too, because, you know, if, if our, my core, my Corey, my husband and I, um, we, we've always said, you know, we just, we want to get him through school, like unscathed with his personality and his little soul intact. Right. Cause you know, he'll do, he'll be successful with whatever he puts his mind to at the end of the day. And we'll make sure that we can get him, you know, whatever education that is required, we'll help him best we can, but to put him in a building with a group of people that he has massive anxiety over on a daily basis and he doesn't feel like he fits in and it's not, healthy for him um i just my whole goal with him going to school was just to get him through unscathed right and so mm -hmm. having this whole online process now open up is really interesting to me to see him and how much he's enjoying it so i don't know maybe there's a silver lining there for him somewhere <laughs> that's beautiful mm -hmm. that's what i I'm, i've been saying through through these video casts is that there there is a silver lining and, and some of us need to search deeper for it uh, but but there is something, and um, and once you can <clears throat> tap into that, it can be really beautiful and be uplifting. And so for him, like this is wonderful. I know we've talked about, like I remember those kids when they were just little, little, Babies. like when you did family photos, and then yeah. he was just brand new, right? Like I, I remember yes. that, and um, and just you know, I I've been gone for a lot of years, for like seven years now from Alberta, but. <clears throat> Yeah, just kind of watching them grow up and it's just been fascinating to see how they change. And we've talked about him before in terms of what he needs uh, for, mm -hmm. you know, for growth and things and all kids mm -hmm. are different, right? So this is amazing yeah. that perhaps this online platform or digital platform is, is better for him, right? And you can utilize you know, that in the classroom yeah. when he goes back to school. Like there's so much information here and despite how hard this is, that's yeah. cool, right? Yeah. Yeah, grateful for grateful for the little miracles that are coming, you know, out of this situation for sure. And and I think that goes, you know, without say for for like you said, the silver lining, like instead of spending this time glued to Netflix and um, you know, not growing in some capacity, I think it's really important to use this time to pick up a skill that you've always wanted to do. Like there's so much free resources online right now through YouTube or whatever. Maybe you want to learn, you know, investing. If, if you're not very good financially, maybe now is the time to, to understand mm -hmm. finances a little bit better. How about you get an education in that? How about, you know, how about you write that book you want to write and finish it? How about you, should, you know, yeah. <laughs> how about you take a typing class? Like things that are going to be really important as we get out of this, especially if you're someone who's lost your income or lost your, you know, your, your job for the time being, who knows what it's going to look like when we come out of this. So maybe use this time to get an, a new skill under your, your belt. You know, there's so many online opportunities that you can, you can grow an online platform and business right now too. So I encourage you to look into that. I think um, the Google search for work from home was like up 400%, right? So it's important to do your research when you're looking at, you know, things to do from home. Um, I know my business, for example, is a network marketing company. So there's tons of those opportunities available too, but I, I do think you need to do your research. Um, there's all kinds of, um, you know, paid opportunities online. So you know, I think the only consistent thing is change. 
And um, if, if you can adapt to the change and, and plug in instead of just letting this time waste, waste away, but you use it for something valuable for yourself, I think you'll come out of it way ahead of where you, where you think you will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Yeah. So thanks for sharing that. Um, what about your, the, the team under you of, of all your, um, your consultants? How are you supporting them and coping with what's <clears> going <throat> on? And that's, that's a lot of people you're supporting. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> What I do is a really a relationship business. So I feel mm -hmm. like in some ways, um, it, it's all about building relationships and keeping relationships. So for me with my team, um, I don't, it's not, I don't look at the number that they're, they're doing. It's not about that. It's about like, how are you doing right as a person, as a, you know, so I've just reached out to everybody that I can. Um, within my organization and just ask them, you know, how are you doing today? Like, you know, is there anything I can do to help? Like, where are you at? How's your day going? Right? Mm -hmm. So just starting a quick conversation with people, they open up and will tell you, right? And I think that that's, that's valuable for you in just your, you know, your network. If you're sitting at home and you're feeling isolated, like reach out to your friends. Like, um, I have a good group of friends that we used to go down to, um, the Dave Matthews show in Washington once a year for like 15 years, we would all mm -hmm. caravan down there. There was about 15 of us from all over um, the Wonderful. States and Canada. And we haven't seen each other for a couple of years because we kind of stopped going to that concert. Um, one year, Dave didn't go to the concert, but then the next year, I don't know, something came up. So it's been a few years, but we connected just like this on Zoom. Mm -hmm. like the 15 of us and had a great conversation and it was just awesome to be connected again and to realize the relationships that we have in our lives and how important they are so you know using this platform of zoom i, I love that or facetime or any kind of video chat that that you can get on with your network i think is powerful so for my team i do that as well like um we do where right now two or three times a week we'll have some kind of event that our team can plug into on zoom that we can chat and then um, go through some mm -hmm. training stuff but also just check in with people see how they're doing um the bulk of my day my business day is spent just checking in on people and having conversations and seeing how i can help so just being there for people i think is really important right now with with um everything that's going on mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I was uh, perusing on Facebook last night and there was a really brave post of a woman and I, I don't know who she was. It was a friend who shared and like, and she was like, this is what um, being a mom of a, a brand new baby looks like right now. And she took a picture of her face and she was just crying. Mm -hmm. And it was such a brave post. And she, she wrote a, a bunch in there mm -hmm. about you know, what it was, what it's like for her and, and how hard it is. Um, and so I just know that that's just one example of a lot of examples of people who are struggling and like how many people, you know, there, there's lots out there and I, you know, I don't yeah. want to discount that, but you're one of them that, that posts a before and after photo of like what you're doing. Right. And, yeah. and you're like, Oh, I just went for a run or like whatever it was. I, I can't remember, but I'm like, good for you. Like you're brave, you know, yeah. putting yourself uh, in a vulnerable way out there for, to share with people. Right. And that's what this woman did too. And I just, I just think like, how many people are not doing that? How many people are sitting there and they're devastated and they're trying right. to take care of their kids and they aren't posting that and they're just suffering. Right. And, you know? and, and, and that's really hard. Like, I mean, being a mom is hard enough, but when you're isolated as a mom, especially a new mom for the first time, um, there, you rely so much on outside support and communication when you're first, I remember bringing my first child home. I remember thinking they're letting me leave the hospital with this baby. Like what? Like, I don't even know what I'm doing. Like, how are they letting me leave? Right. And so um, getting home, it was kind of scary being at home with a new infant and not knowing anything, right? And then now not having the support around you to ha be able to have them come check in on you. If you know anybody that's had a baby recently, yeah, I encourage you definitely check in on them and through video or, or 
call or drop things at their door or like whatever you can do to help support those new mamas I think is super important because it's already isolating enough when you have a brand new baby but to go through this situation I definitely think that that's um it's it's I'd say one of the harder situations to be in for sure um and if you are a new mom and you're watching this and you're struggling reach out like there is no harm or shame or you know anything in in reaching out just to say hey I need help like can we chat mm -hmm. um because just even sometimes having that ear to vent to <laughs> can be very um, therapeutic and releasing all your pent up whatever it is right and you know what I know as being a mom give yourself grace you're not going to be perfect there's no there's no book on raising a child. You just, you know, your job is just to keep your child alive and keep you alive. <laughs> At the end of the day, it doesn't matter if the dishes are piled up and the laundry or the house is a mess or whatever. All that's important is that you're, you know, it's a win of the day if you guys are both uh, doing good and healthy. So try to give yourself some grace. That's my opinion anyways. I know I remember days, you know, my husband works out of town, right? So um, there was times where I was at home for days with my kids without mm -hmm. that support. And I know there's a lot of single moms, obviously in the same situation, um, but, di but different obviously. But anyways, I remember the feeling of being home with the, with the kids. Um, and, and yeah, it's important to stay connected. So um, I encourage moms of kids at any age, find a friend, a sister, um, someone that you can connect with even weekly or a couple times a week, it's important important mm -hmm. yeah i agree i agree um now sue do you think that there's anything else that that you uh deem valuable that any of our viewers and it could be anybody watching from from anywhere in the world right is there anything else that that you would like to share from you to them to to help you know motivate or inspire or just spread that hope and love yeah i think just know that this this will pass like like i know mm -hmm. that it might you know the world is going through a chaotic time right now but history repeats itself and we we will come out of this in the end i know we will and i think having a little glimpse into the you know i guess i just i just want to say you can come out of it better than you went into it if you put the time and effort and energy into yourself in growing yourself and, and surrounding yourself with positivity. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm so excited about all the free resources that are online right now that companies are offering to help people. So take advantage of those, you guys. Um, you know, Amy's, you know, business as well. There's so many great services like you're providing right here, just spreading messages of love and hope, like plug into this stuff, because maybe you'll just even take one little nugget away. Like, yeah, she's right. Maybe I don't need, need to listen to the news 24 seven or whatever. And you'll find little things um, come out of it. Keep a journal maybe of what you're feeling too throughout this process so you can have that because this is a once in a lifetime situation that we're in right now that I feel like, you know, the globe is going through um, as a whole. So it might be interesting to look back and at how far you've come. I think it's important to celebrate your successes along the way, right? So um, yeah, and then I think just um, reminding yourself just to take it day at a time, right? Um, and, and do one thing for yourself each day to win the day. Yeah, I love that. And, and I think like, I talked a few days ago about like this cumulative so, you know, and the power of manifestation, as you're saying that, I'm thinking, yeah, like, if you do a cooking class online, like, and then write a little journal about it, like, this is what I learned how to do today, and this is how I felt about it, or, or whatever you want to say in the journal, and then, and then you do a sewing class, or you do a language class, or you do a yoga class, I don't, I don't care what it is, but you do these things, and then there's this cumulative effect that that we're not even con in control of. Like, like we're not in control of what happens in our brain. We are in control of how we respond to the stimulus in yes. front of us, yes. right? So if, if we're responding in a positive way, there will be a natural effect of, um, 
of happiness of an, and like increased mm -hmm. neurotransmitters that that help us to feel more positive but if we are engaging in behaviors that are not that and we're ignoring all of it and we're crying and we're you know we're just a, like and I'm not suggesting don't cry because believe me, like, yeah. <laughs> I know crying. Crying is very, very important for cathartic release. But when we consistently stay in that place, we choose to stay there. The cumulative effect is that the brain goes, well, I don't need to actually produce any dopamine or oxytocin or serotonin because there's no, there's nothing happening. There's no stimulus around me to be able to respond to. So my encouragement based on what you're saying, Sue, is yeah, like, do something even mm -hmm. though you're tied up at home like do something the best you can and if you don't know how to do that because you're just so stuck like we're not far you know if you can access this video and hear these words please send us an email mm -hmm. right and uh and and we'll give more ideas and we'll you know do them with you in some ways and because we're all doing that too this like sue this video you and i are connecting and it's beautiful because yeah. we you know, this is something that, that we haven't done. We connect when I come to Lethbridge. Yeah. Like, and, and now I'm not in Lethbridge right now, and we're connecting just the same as we would if I was on your couch in your living room. Yeah, it's great. It's super cool, right? Yeah. 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 And, and what you said there, I think is powerful too, Amy, having a, an accountability partner. Like if you, you know, if you pick an accountability partner to go through the next 60 days with and you guys just even send your one win a day like I got on the treadmill today I had um, something healthy in, in my diet today I took some time and meditated I um, spent some time with my kids I whatever it is that makes you feel good um, even if you just send that back and forth to each other on a daily basis to check in I think that there's a lot of power and accountability too I love it I love it so just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here today and giving us this time. Uh, I'm really hopeful that this video and that all these videos will be supportive of some or all who watch them. Uh, you know, we, I do appreciate feedback for sure. And um, Sue, I'm wondering if, if anybody wanted to ask you a question directly, would it be okay if they emailed me and I forwarded that to you? Oh, totally. Yep. You betcha. Yeah. That would be my pleasure. I'd like to help out any way that I can. And yeah, um, yeah I'm here for everybody. Yeah, totally. And connecting with people that we don't know is such a, a really neat experience because people show up with like different, different things that they have to say that we would have never thought of. And it's just like, it's this dynamic interaction of something that we, we didn't know we would be having that day. So yeah. I encourage those of you who are watching to wake up with curiosity of what your day could look like because it can look really beautiful even yeah. confined at home. I agree. So yeah. So thanks you for the time and uh, yeah, be in touch whenever we'll, you know, we'll touch base and, um, and that's that. So that's great. I hope you have a wonderful day and I really appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks for the invite, Amy. And hope that, um, hope that you could take one nugget away from what we shared today. Thank you. I certainly have. Take care, Sue. Bye. Bye.